Dubai, a desert emirate being shaped to become the leisure capital of the oil-rich Gulf. We have the tallest building. We've got the greatest hotels. We are creating something very, very special. A centerpiece of this new Dubai will be a shopping mall designed to outstrip all malls with 1,200 shops and a slogan as brash as its scale, everything you desire, completed to a next to impossible deadline. The biggest challenge that we have to face is time. People haven't done anything as this size this quickly before. Riding on its success, a multi-million dollar price tag and the reputation of Dubai. The desert sun rises over the Dubai Mall, the city's shining new landmark. In three days, the mall will open. Everywhere you look, over 10,000 workers are frantically racing to beat the clock. Miles of railings left to polish, acres of marble still to clean. Mannequins are waiting for their flashy threads. The mall, sold as the best Dubai has to offer, is now in a desperate race against the sheer scale of this project's ambition. Bob Fields, the new head contractor, is on his rounds. He has a lot of ground to cover. The site contains the area of 50 football fields. Every corner he turns, there's something that needs finishing, cleaning, tidying, and he has to sort it out himself. L Lynette, wh where's Omar? Hurry up, I need him right now. Well, tell them to retract. He's determined that the mall will open on time. It's already missed two deadlines. If it misses a third, well, that's down to him. But of the 1,200 shops due to open here, only half are occupied. Some just haven't been fitted out yet, and some have yet to be leased. What looks to us pretty much like a building site, to Bob, is a diamond in the rough. Nobody goes home until 1 o'clock in the morning, and everybody's back at 5. Overall, the entire community has come together to cooperate and give us the opportunity to open the month. It's going to be very exciting. We're going to have SWAT teams that are set up and positioned around the building. We're going to uh, invite the public to come in. Uh, traffic is going to be a challenge. We're anticipating some 50,000 cars every day. The thousands who thronged the mall when it eventually opened will never know the real story of those frantic final hours they would have come to see a mall worthy of Dubai. Opulent spaces and shops, row upon row of them. There's a vast aquarium to wonder at, with a massive acrylic viewing panel bigger than any other in the world. There's a full-size ice rink in a city where outside temperatures can top 40 degrees. The mall is so vast, it was assembled out of 37 conjoined buildings. It boasts an old-fashioned Arabian souk, a world record-beating aquarium, an ice rink, and an entertainment center complete with a roller coaster. Stretching over one square kilometer, it sits on a mega floor space that beats the reigning mega mall in China and dwarfs the Mall of America hands down. Two years back, and a formerly empty stretch of sand is being turned into this retail palace. The project is badly behind schedule. Going by best laid plans, it should have opened by now. Angeline Chan, chief architect, is on one of her regular visits to the huge spaces that she's helping to create future ceiling heights for the tenants. Let's go see the precast panels. It's bigger than anything she's yet done. Probably the job of her career, with some touches she's particularly proud of. I think my personal favorite spaces in the whole mall are all the atrium spaces. 
The atrium spaces, the three-story high uh, corridors, even at this stage, when you walk around the mall, and finishers aren't even in yet, but you can feel the majestic spaces that surrounds you. I'm just left in complete awe. There's no time for her to relax and enjoy the view, though. Every time she comes here, there are technical challenges to be faced. The naughtiest problem, to get column-free roofs over the vast atrium in place on time. So what's the contract you're promising us now? Um, you're probably looking at about February next year for this. The biggest challenge that we had to face is time. We're given the task of building this mall in 28 months. Months behind the original schedule. It's not just the open halls that are causing problems. The whole design is throwing up challenges for the architect. The complex has been designed as 37 separate buildings. Local codes say all structures must hold up against earthquakes up to 5.5 on the Richter scale. So each building is reinforced by sheer walls that withstand lateral force. A side-to-side -side motion won't bring it down. A 100 millimeter gap between each building not only allows for expansion in the desert heat, but if one should fall in an earthquake, it won't bring down any others with it. While Dubai does not stand in a high-risk area for earthquakes, the disaster in Bam in nearby Iran was felt even here. In 2003, that devastating quake left 43,000 dead, 30,000 injured, Many perished as buildings collapsed. In Dubai, no one is taking any chances. More than anyone outside the royal family, one man is responsible for the shape of modern Dubai. The Director General of the Department of Economic Development, Mohammed bin Ali Alabar, known universally as the Chairman. Everyone on the Dubai Mall project answers to him. So you can give me a discount. Our rates compared to them is very reasonable. We will work together. I appreciate it. I will I do all your help. rates. I need open your book. Help. Open book. Yeah. I'll do open book with you. Fair? Fair. Open. But the chairman is nothing if not a hands-on boss. It means he comes up with changes to the design. Today, he's not too pleased with the fountains he's paying top dollar for. Last week, we had to kind of decide that, you know, we had taken some, some walls out, some water feature that, in my views, and my management view, that it was <laughs> obstructing fountain views. We are putting beautiful restaurants overlooking this $100 million fountain. Can you please take the wall down and let them see the fountain? Simple. The first reaction is, yeah, it's very, very painful. And there's always a deadline to chase, yeah. So it's, it's never an easy task. I like to get involved in, in sometimes in some of the design element, uh, which maybe I'm a little too involved, to be honest with you. Well, his involvement here is one that will reshape Dubai. Next to the Mega Mall, he's also set his architects challenges that include the world's tallest skyscraper. We are creating something very, very special in this area. We have the tallest building. We've got the greatest hotels. It's going to be something that people recognize us. So what the chairman wants, the chairman gets. Back at the site, Angeline has to break the news to the construction head, Jim Scobie. We've been looking at this for about six weeks, two months. So it's been six weeks? That's what we'd like to do is if we can go ahead and, and redesign this quickly and get yeah. it to them. Okay. For a minute there, it sounded like a plan. But there's a catch. Okay. Whatever we design, and we're probably coming up with three alternatives, has to be presented to the chairman and all that. Angeline tries to make light of it. No, 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 just do it in between the peers or something. I mean, she always finds a way to make the changes the chairman asks for. So it might be some sort of lightweight canopy structure. And you just hang around here, you sip coffee, you listen to the water, this nice sound, and then birds chirping. Today is a good day. Everyone politely goes <laughs> along. Pretty much on the impossible task. People haven't done anything as this size this quickly before. And if this wasn't enough, there's a sandstorm approaching.
The Dubai Mall, largest in the world. It holds 95 elevators, 150 escalators, with plans to attract 30 million visitors in the first year alone to its array of glitzy shops. At its center is the aquarium with 400 sharks. In total, more than 33,000 marine creatures can be viewed through a panel so large, it's in the Guinness Book of World Records. The chairman made sure of that. The size is, you know, it's, not, it's important, but it doesn't really shake me. But yes, I want to know how, how big it is, what's in there, how many species are you here? We've got 33,000 species in this thing. We've got 400 sharks. Say, so, okay, now we're talking, you know. The task of constructing this monster mall has been an epic. It's still nowhere close to opening day. Every day, the night shift of 2,500 workers heads for some well-deserved rest. The day shift of 10,000 workers picks up its tools. It's tough work in the raging heat of the unforgiving sun. Temperatures in the desert emirate can hit over 40 degrees in summer. Heat exhaustion is an ever-present danger, especially for a foreign workforce, acclimatizing to the local weather and the demanding schedule. Currently now, the work on site doesn't stop at all. It's 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, during summer, during winter. People say, um, you know, the difficult we do quickly, the impossible takes us a little longer. Uh, and that's what we have to deal with here until you say the chairman's coming and then they say, oh, we'll get her done. The chairman, Mohammed bin Ali Alabar, is responsible for some of the shiniest new buildings in Dubai. And today, he's coming to the mall for a viewing. He likes to be hands-on. Put them, please. Again, I need someone to trim these palm trees around the square. Still, dead leaves are hanging. Yeah? OK. Uh, and I'm very bad. I, I pick bad things easily with my eyes. <laughs> On another trip, he noticed the colored panels on the facade of the gold souk were not to his liking. I think it was maybe a little too dark. So um, I said, you know, the, these shades are not matching from the main road. I said, you know, it's, it's really be, it will reflect badly on us. I think they had to take the panel down and, uh, and, and probably replace. Once it's completed, the mall will open onto a boulevard on the scale of Paris's Champs-Élysées. Now the chairman wants to see how the grand entrance to the mall is progressing. He wants to be sure it'll make the right impression. Obviously, his arrival is treated as a bit of an event, and he's ushered to the high atrium just inside the main entrance. It's going to be a highlight. I believe then about the maintenance Wild, issues huh? and all the rest, and we're checking their ceramic or Correct. Ceramic they're, they're, they're going to be very, very nice. He listens knowledgeably to the explanations of the decisions being made. The boss tries his best to be enthusiastic. Then he zeroes in on the details. All your columns are finished one color, huh? One clad, one clad. OK. Thankfully, he doesn't notice anything he absolutely has to change. I think a little bigger would have been also okay. Building 11, 12, we are at building 10. Building 15, 23, 26. <laughs> this is just amazing. As one building. Well, I just want to go and shake every small guy's hand. We'll put it together brick by brick. We we'll put in the granite floors. I feel like, you know, I want to do the opening so quick, and the opening should be for them. Thank you, guys. 
In another part of the mall, the little guys are frantically rushing for opening day. One of the most important attractions at the mall will be the aquarium. Once done, it's designed to impress. That means it's going to have to be big. It will hold 10 million liters of water, equivalent to four Olympic-sized pools. And acrylic panels 750 millimeters thick will hold back the enormous pressure of the water. By heating and cooling the panels, the joints will disappear, creating a single panel so big, it'll make the Guinness Book of World Records. The centerpiece of the aquarium will be a transparent tunnel 48 meters long. Sitting at the tank floor, 10 meters down, it will be subject to immense pressures. Iron rings help to keep its shape. It has used up the entire supply of acrylic from two factories for a year. It's had to be precision manufactured in four massive pieces. And each giant piece weighs 32 tons and is extremely fragile. So moving them requires care. A single wooden rolling jack is called in. The plan is to hoist the tunnel in, roll it along, and place it in position. Sounds deceptively simple. The aquarium is the one that we're, we're all nervous about. If something goes wrong, the lead time to fix it means going back to the manufacturers. It's, they're in different countries, and they're many months away from reproducing and, and reissuing. See the play gap inside in the wheel. It's all done under the watchful eye of manager Peter Knapp. It's the first time anyone here has attempted anything like this. Everything is done in slow motion. Even with something as large as this, there's little margin for error. The skilled workers build up the supports to level the jack before it inches up to take the weight of the tunnel. The tunnel lifts into the air all right, but soon the crew spots something. The tunnel is distorting under its own weight. The pressure has forced the sides to curve inward. If they set it down now, it will shatter. My worst nightmare is if it were to fall and it breaks. They're building this in the, the States. A, they have a fabrication time of a number of months. It takes a number of weeks to get here. Because we have to bring the tunnel back in, there are things outside that cannot be done until the tunnel section is here. So the entire project, or part of the entire project, is going to be delayed for half a year to a year. Dubai's not shy about flaunting its extravagant projects, such as the world's biggest man-made island, the Palm Development, home to many of the world's rich and famous and some of the highest property prices. Oil money has been pumped into the famous Burj Hotel. Now the Mega Mall is rushing to join a Dubai being rebuilt for a day when the oil money runs out. And as always, no innovative job is without risk of delay even if it's from a simple sandstorm, which cuts down work to the bare minimum. The next day, after a night of head scratching, they've come up with a new idea to move the aquarium tunnel into place. In theory, the plan should work. The measurements add up. So they spread the load, and the tunnel is now balanced across two separate jacks. The supports come down piece by piece, and slowly the tunnel inches downwards. But just when they think the plan is working... The crew notice that the jacks are out of sync, and their load is coming down at an angle. The pressure of 32 tons of acrylic is concentrated onto one corner. If they try to set it down, the edge will snap off. It's not an easy job. Um, there is stress because of the, 
if something goes wrong, there's, you know, the consequences on it. So that does put quite a bit of stress on you. Peter keeps at work, adjusting with his control units, balancing the two jacks carefully, keeping the tunnel straight. After eight hours, he thinks he's got it right. No one knows for sure until the tunnel hits bottom. All that remains is to haul it into place with a rather simple lever and pulley system. Only another three pieces to go. When they're all in place, they will be welded together, made watertight, and covered with 10 million liters of water. While the aquarium is taking shape, architect Angeline is focusing on another of the chairman's ideas, an Olympic-sized ice rink. Layers of concrete are going down and being smoothed off. Even at this level, below the surface, bumps will mean uneven ice. Angeline has come back to talk the roof through. The rink can accommodate 400 skaters at a time. So the roof is going to be massive, and they plan to use natural light, creating a Swiss cheese structure with the desert sun beating down through 60 skylights onto the ice below. About the impact of the sun, the studies will be coming back in a couple of weeks' time. I think the worst case scenario is that we may have to introduce uh, film to just take maybe 5-10% of the direct sunlight off. The sheer heat could be a problem for the ice. An ice rink is rather like an ordinary fridge. Pipes are laid through the concrete. Cold glycol will be pumped through them from refrigeration units. This will freeze the concrete, and then the ice will be built up on top of it, layer by layer. But having skylights above means the ice must be kept two degrees colder than a rink in a temperate climate. Everything on this site is geared to breaking records. You need cranes to shift all this big stuff around. In fact, there's been so much construction in Dubai that it's said that up to a quarter of all the world's stock of cranes can be found here. The biggest at the site is the Demog 2800. There are just 50 of these 600-ton monsters in the world, and they're only called in for jobs that no other crane can take on. Somebody hurry, hurry, they want to need job, hurry, hurry. But the mission cannot move like this. Patient, we need first this heavy crane. George and his demog have been called in today to start lifting the pieces for the roof of the entertainment complex. Each A job which requires all the patience and experience George has gained in his 26 years with his crane. Some people are angry, some people shouting. That time we want to keep silent like that. The roof of the entertainment center will be put together like a giant jigsaw puzzle. Supporting a huge span with no columns below is difficult enough. But this roof has thousands of pipes, beams, nuts and bolts. Because in Dubai, they not only like things big, they like them complicated. The easier way would be to build a simple flat roof. This will have an undulating design, which means that not only do the trusses and joints have to be rock solid, but they're amazingly complex. Each piece has to be designed and manufactured individually. Of course, the design was a special request from the chairman. Well, I think you should have a little bit of taste, so now I want to do something 
better. I want to do something creative. And the entertainment roof is just one of 69 roofs that will come down over them all. It was one of the most complex roof structures that we've ever done. Uh, with the, the many skylights that we've designed, each different from the other, we were setting ourselves this huge task. One factory in Dubai has upped the number of machines, ramped up its manpower, and has been working round the clock for the last four months to get the roof parts made. Once the intricate computer designs arrive, the work begins. It requires a surprisingly fine touch. The hand of the operator guides the computer designs. Every hole, every cut, every weld has to be millimeter exact. Any mistake and the pieces won't connect on site. 